For those of you in a hurry, within the Layers panel, click once on your mask. Here in the Properties panel, come down to the Feather value, increase that, and we are done. A nice soft edge mask. For those of you not in a hurry, let me delete this mask and let's start from scratch. So here in the Layers panel, we can see we have a very simple setup, a white background layer, and my bride image just on top here. So let's come over to the Rectangular Marquee tool, click and hold, grab the Elliptical Marquee tool, and let's drag out a selection that looks pretty good just there. So I've got the selection in place. I've clicked once on this layer to make it the active layer. At the bottom of the Layers panel is this button just here, Add Layer Mask. I'm going to click on that now, and when I do, it converts my selection into this mask just here. So we've nicely masked our image just here, but of course this edge is very sharp. Let's see if we can't soften this thing up. Now many of you might be thinking, well, let's apply some Gaussian blur to this thing. Let's give that a try. Now you need to be very careful with your targeting just here. For example, if I click on the layer thumbnail, those pixels are targeted. Any blurring would now affect those pixels. We want to go after the mask, right? So let's click once on the mask. We can see that outline just there. So we're good to go. Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. For my American friends, that's Gaussian Blur. And we can dial in any number we like. That's looking pretty good just there. Let's choose OK. Now again, we've got a nice result just here. And we can see our mask is indeed fuzzy. If I hold down the Alt or the Option key and click on the mask, we can directly visualize the mask just here. So we can see we've got these nice soft edges, these nice soft transitions just here. But here's the problem, guys. The change that we just made was a destructive change. We have permanently changed the pixels within this mask. Now, the reason that could be problematic is because if we wish to change the look of how fuzzy this thing is in the future, this could be a little tricky. So I'm going to click on the thumbnail for the layer itself to not visualize the mask any further. And let's undo one step just here. So we've seen that applying a filter directly to a mask is a destructive change. Let's have a look at another option you might be thinking. So again, I'll click back on the mask. Notice with a mask targeted, the properties panel will display mask options just here. Now you may have noticed there is a select and mask button just down here which I'll click on just now. That jumps us into an entirely new interface just for editing masks. There is a ton of stuff in here, lots of fantastic options for editing masks. I'm going to happily ignore all of it and focus just on this feather option just here. So let's drag this up to a nice high value. That's looking pretty great just there. Actually guys, let me put in a very specific number because we'll revisit this in just a few moments. So I'm entering a feather value of 40 pixels. Let's choose OK. This is looking great out here. Let's alter option click on our mask. It's nice and fuzzy. Clicking back on my layer thumbnail just here. So this is looking great, right? And we were just adjusting the slider, right? Because we can change that slider in the future if we wish to adjust the feathering, right? Or can we? So let's explore that just now. So let's click back on the mask just here. Let's click on the selected mask button again to get us back into that same interface we were in a moment ago. And check this out. The feather value now reads as zero. So the big takeaway just here, guys, is that when we make a change inside of here and choose OK, that applies those settings to the mask and then basically resets the entire thing when we come back in here. So I'm just going to cancel out of here. So as cool as what we just did, once again, it was another destructive change to the mask. 
tweaking this thing in the future could be tricky. So let me once again undo one step. Again, our sharp mask is back. So double checking that our mask is indeed still selected, looking in the properties panel again, let's now explore the feather option just here, which is what I showed you at the top of the video. So if I grab this thing just now and drag it up, we can see these edges are starting to fuzz out nicely. And actually, let me just change this straight to the number 60. And I think this is looking pretty great. Now, if I alter option click on the mask, it's nice and fuzzy, right? But notice guys, the feather slider down here, if I change this, the mask itself is dynamically changing. This is fantastic. So we can see that this slider is truly non-destructive. I'll just click back on the layer thumbnail so we can see what we're doing. Clicking back on the mask. And again, let me push this back up to 60 because I think that looks pretty nice just there. And just to really hammer the point home here, guys, you could click away. You could add some new layers. You could save this file and reopen it in two weeks time. If you wish to adjust this, click once on the mask and your feather option is once again available to you. So I'm going to wrap things up just there, guys. I hope that gives you some good insight now onto how you can better feather your masks here inside of Photoshop. Catch you later.